That's right. I am joined by Jeff Ubb. And we were saying, first time I've, we've actually sat down, you and me at least in some time, uh, since that Microsoft investment, I think. Hard it's to get. funny, though. You know, the firm has changed. Your role has changed to a certain extent. You're no longer CIO of Value Act. You are still, of course, its founder and CEO. You're very focused on um, ESG. Uh, but activism itself, I mean, you're not an activist conference, but I don't even think of you as an activist anymore. Should I? I mean, we put the time in to get to know the company and the trust of the board and the other constituents, and which is a lot of travel. Um, you haven't run a proxy we, fight. And, and, and so the, then we just kind of get to the, to the punchline and say, you know, we think you should refresh your board or you know, why don't you call your top 10 shareholders and ask them what they think? And most of those guys know us, and then you have a conversation and you can get it done without a bunch of yelling and screaming. That's, that's the way we like to do it. You, you kind of hit the ground running when, you hit, when you're in the room. You know, it, it is travel intensive. You know, in Japan, we, we went on the, we put one of our partners on the, on the board of Olympus Medical. The first time a shoulder director has gone on a Niki 225 board. Right. And it's two years worth of work. You know, you visit with the FSA, you visit with other leaders, corporate leaders in the community as well as the company to gain their trust. And, and you know, that's the way we do it. Yeah, now you benefit from the fact that you have locked up money. I mean, you have long-term capital as opposed to some activists who, or those who seem to have much shorter term money. Uh, yeah, it goes I mean, up I, and down. Marketing seems to be a big part of the whole, the whole endeavor. I, I think the incentives, incentives, incentives are everything. You know, so if you have one year capital, you want to make it happen fast. And so you write letters and you get it done. And there's many ways to skin a cat. You know, we're just doing it differently. Yeah. Some of it is temperament. You know, you don't like lawyers in your life so much or whatever it is, you know. Is it, it, forget activism. How about active management? Is it dead? Feels hard. Um, I don't. I don't know how much of the of the of the bid every day is really somebody that's buying intrinsic value on the other side. You know, which uh, it feels like computers to computers. And that December was kind of just the race to the bottom. I think computers talking to computers. There's, there's this huge kind of volatility around quarterly earnings that didn't used to exist. I, I don't, you know, that's, it seems like somebody wants to beat somebody else to the punch on headline right. earnings and stuff like that, which rewires the brain of directors and they think, again, quarterly earnings is really important. But, uh, so it's, it's, it's a little different, you know? I feel like maybe a bit of a dinosaur, maybe. Are you, well, value is still the first name in your firm, in, in your firm's name. Can yeah. you be a value investor in this market, or can you only be one when you have a long-term focus and locked up capital? Well, you got to get to the other side, because I think in the end, fun, intrinsic value will win. And because we have the long-term capital, we have the time horizon um, that will allow our thesis to play out. Um, and, and we really tend to make money in year three, four, and five, not year one and two, if you look at it, you know? so. Uh, and you still think that's that's possible in this market, even though it's all seems to be computer to computer, and as you it say, does, it does. It has gone on a long time. You know, the long bond at two percent for this long has created uh, a market that seems to be difficult for value investors. You know, um, there's always a worry about the next cycle, and high quality businesses can kind of revalue uh, higher and higher because they're, they're treated as bond substitutes. Uh, now, you've changed your focus to some extent um, because you're very focused on, uh, well, ESG, for lack of a better term. You have the spring fund. Um, can you actually earn a return by making investments that also are conceivably good for the planet? Right, right. I have an investment theory that we went financial capital short, social natural capital long in the 70s, uh, which made sense because we were building out the industrial economy. It was a material short world. And so the, the returns accrue to those that allocate well against the scarce asset. Um, that's kind of when we codified the whole concept of return on capital because that was particularly important when interest rates were 15% and tax rates were 70%. Everything's flipped. And today, you know, finance abundant, free money, low taxes, uh, less return accrues to the, to the abundant resource. The scarce resource is human, social, and natural capital. Um, and so those companies that can, and this is where I get active in boardrooms, can, that can 
better address and think more uh, more deeply about environmental and social goals and needs, I think that's going to be where the breakout returns are over the next 20 years. You do. Mm -hmm. And how do you approach that then? And what are you looking for in terms of at least the particular aspects of a conceivable yeah, investment that speak to you about that? Yeah, there's things, there's insight that I think I have because I come new to this world. I think the, the grid, the electricity grid is the crown jewel in the clean economy. And so we've got an investment in Hawaiian Electric. Right. Um, and I think distributed energy will allow them to get off oil. Right, and well that was in particular, they were very leveraged to oil, so right. that, there was a lot of... So we get off alpha. oil, but then we, uh, I think, can electrify transportation really well in Hawaii, it's kind of dense. And then you can drive your car battery home at the end of the day, and you can run your home or sell back to the grid. Um, and I think what happens is you have this incredible payoff in your 2025 and beyond, where you're putting more use, you're putting more electrons over a fixed network. They may be not your electrons, they may be third-party electrons. And that, that drives uh, kilowatt hour rates down because more volume over a fixed network. And so that becomes a huge social good. And then we electrify many, many other use cases, buildings, water heaters. And, and what you get is you get um, you know, the platform for a clean economy, which revalues the grid. So that's how I'm trying to think. You know, the home run, the home run, David, is, is a business model that generates savings versus the kind of the dirty solution right. today and retains the optionality for when we actually do price carbon, the business explodes. And Except it becomes the next... Be, that day in, could be far away, Jeff. Could be, I mean, it seemed like it was near, but if the Trump administration certainly has its way and continues to, let's say, for the next five years, yeah. five and a half, there's not going to be a price on carbon. And, uh, we announced a, a private investment in the spring fund yesterday, Nikola Motor, which is a long-haul hydrogen truck company and they sell on a per mile basis. So they're beating, because they're sourcing clean energy off the grid in the middle of the day at two cents or what have you, and they're putting it into a tank and storing it, and then the trucks off take all night long, you know, with an eight minute charge to go whatever, 500 miles. Um, um, because that energy is so cheap, they're beating diesel handily today on a per mile basis. Um, and then, and then in the, those in the trucking business that are still on diesel, if we reprice carbon, Nikola is you know, a $300 billion company, right? Because they have the infrastructure in place, the refueling infrastructure in place, and it's kind of a first mover advantage to, to, to having that, because you're probably not gonna overbuild their infrastructure. We haven't even talked about autonomy yet when it comes to trucking, there's right. obviously Right, and so then, then pretty too. soon they've got all of I-80 with refueling stations and they're moving the truck autonomously, autonomously and it's totally zero carbon. And, and the, it's the, probably the best application for autonomous. And then you undermine kind of all of logistics as we know it, trains, you know, jet fuel. I mean, that's kind of the big mega play and it's all about the environmental and social footprint. And there are people willing to put money there. And there are people willing to put money into the Spring Fund as well. I mean, you can actually scale to a level that allows you to make meaningful investments and generate a real return? You know, it's not an easy sale because the moralists are like, why are you in the wood pellet business? Because you're cutting trees down. And my point is, well, it's a decarbonizing technology. It might not be the answer, but it's better to move off coal faster. So the moralists maybe don't like it. And then the guys like you that are fiduciary duty guys say, well, how do you know you can get a return? And it feels like Value Act in 2000 when people were like, what is this act thing and why do boards listen to you? And the other guys wanted me to hedge with shorting stocks and I said, I don't, I'm not going to do that. And so, you know, you, maybe you grow slowly as you prove it out.